Check out this beautiful Suzuki. It's a TS125. I think it's a 75, 1970, 75 or 76. Here's what's going on. Six volt system, pretty lame. Uh, it doesn't need a battery to run because it has three coils. One coil is for the ignition and one of the other two, and I'm a little confused on this, but I know that one is designed to charge the battery and one's a lighting coil. But I think when the light's off, it uses both to charge the battery. Um, right now it's a nominal amount of energy. It's not enough to run the turn signals. And when you rev the engine, you can see the headlight get bright and then go dim again. What we want to do is change the stator out. And uh, we're going to change the rectifier out to a modern silicone full bridge, I believe. Right now it's uh, kind of a dead, sh dead short kind of voltage regulator. Um, so what I've done is I've ordered from Germany this stator kit. It's Power Dynamo. And this kit is for a Suzuki RV125. I've done something kind of like this before where I put electronic ignition on a Suzuki two-stroke twin. Uh, that's in my video links. Some of them go back like six years for the uh, Suzuki twins. Um, but I'm also going to be changing this to electronic points or electronic ignition at the same time. So you might be here for that. But stick around. Let's install this kit and see what kind of problems we run into and we'll work through them in real time. Pretty good running little machine. But you can see now we're six volt pretty weak, weak sauce. Let me rev it up. hand panel, the 6 volt battery, the tank, the left hand case cover, and the seats on a hinge. So we're going to leave that attached for now, unless it gets in the way for video uh, filming. I'm going to impact this stator off, and this is the correct puller. It threads in, left hand threads, and then you drive this. And I think there's hammer marks all over this stator or magnet you know you can demagnetize stuff by hitting it with a hammer if you've ever had a screwdriver get magnetized you can sometimes i'll whack mine on an anvil or something while i'm working or something hard and it knocks the magnetism out so you know that's going to affect these especially the new modern ones they have uh, the magnets glued on in some cases and you go to beating on those that might be the reason why i'm in here right now i don't have a gauze meter of any way to check how strong this magnet is or what it should be and um, we'd be replacing parts to go back OEM. Might as well upgrade while we're in here. So I drove the bolt in to remove this piece. And There's a key here on this shaft. You wanna either remove it now so you know where it goes. Um, when I'm working on these to go back, I always stick it on the magnet on the inside of your uh, rotor. This is the condenser so the condenser is connected to one of these windings and that is going to be your ignition winding this one and this one look like different gauge wire but i'm assuming one of these is a lighting coil and a charging coil here's your normal points when you go to adjust your points you'll loosen the screw here and adjust got an impact screwdriver you might remember this from years ago. Same one, still been using it. And I'm putting pressure on it to turn it the direction I want it to go while I'm hitting it. And that broke it free. If you just get this tool out the first time, you won't strip stuff. Okay, well, you're less likely to strip things. Slide this out, and you'll see one connector still hanging on there. That is gonna be for the neutral indicator and it broke here's our new windings and this label says VAPE in a kind of modern way <laughs> and it's from the Czech Republic okay right now we're concerned with the clocking of this let's put this upwards and the cable running up there's two recesses here. It came with some cap head screws and I've added a washer to fit that pocket nicely. 
Let's place it like so. So this is interesting. It's not going to have mechanical points anymore. It's going to have a magnetic pickup. This is stationary, bolted in one place, no adjustment to be made. Here is the new magnets. The manufacturer says to run your finger in here to make sure that none of the magnets are loose, but this has a cap on it. I think that might be a new rev. Notice this mark here and this line. There's no keyway anymore. This is smooth, almost like a Morse taper. Um, the keyway, the key rather, is out. And we're gonna just plop this on here. So, this is gonna be interesting how we set the timing. Ta da! This is where I earn your views. This uh, magneto is back on because you won't find published data for a TS125 duster. Uh, as far as ignition is concerned, because there is no option with the original configuration. You can adjust the gap of the points, but you can't adjust the degree at which those points begin to open, other than distance, okay? So let's just figure out what stock position the points open, and we're doing that by putting a dial indicator in the spark plug hole and measuring top dead center. While it's at top dead center, we look at the original marks. There's a hash mark here, on this magneto and you can see that now I'm at top dead center I'll switch the camera here in a second that it is well after the original mark in the case there's a little triangle that would be the ignition point stock before top dead center dead center by rotating the engine in the direction of travel you see the dial indicator is turning the same direction as the engine so right there is top dead center Let's see if we can zero this a little and make our math easier. All right, we're nailing zero. Now what we're going to want to do is go counterclockwise and line up our mark on the rotor and our dimple on the case and watch what the indicator does. Going back. Okay, it's lined up now, and you can't see it, but the indicator is showing 10. So 10, let's just check it again. Top dead center. Before top dead center to the mark is 10 again. That's good. So our new rotor has the indicator here, and on the plate, there's a mark in approximately this area here. We've got our indicator at 10, which was the same before top dead center as the old system. And we're going to place this on its tapered shaft without the key and line up without moving the engine the two marks. And hope that stays. All right. That's got. Just checking everything again. 10, and this mark, and this mark. Just checking my work here, and looking at my dial indicator. It says it should be firing right there, and this mark is lining up with the red mark. And here's something convenient. I don't know if it was meant this way, but this arrow in the case is now top dead center with this line. Coincidence? Maybe? Handy? Absolutely. So I've removed the old coil from this location and I want to put this right in here so the tank can go down over it and the plug wire reaches. Let's mark our holes.
go find a nice safe place for this DC regulator and I think I found just the spot Now we're removing the original components, battery tray, there's two bolts here, one here and here. You can follow that wire and you'll find this connector here with a yellow and green wire. You can disconnect those. Those go to the resistor. We're not going to use that anymore, just for the lighting. So that wire comes down through here, and then this rectifier goes into your big connector. Okay. Is the turn signal. I've just cut this one off. Left the pigtail alone. I've already tinned this stuff. Orange is going to go to B and this blue teal is going to L. So to finish up the coil, we just run the brown wire out of that bundle that comes with it to the ground. These two red and whites, you add the clip and they clip to the red and white on the coil. The blue and white is your kill wire and that came out of this bundle. It, the old coil is attached to it. It's just a black wire. And I decided to put a male like eighth inch plug to fit the original wiring harness so I didn't have to cut that. This wire runs back here. Here's the next thing to connect. This is two AC lines that come from the new stator. It doesn't matter which way you get them on, you just gotta get them two connected. The brown off of that, I went to a convenient location. Now, I'm not using a battery on this bike, but if I did, I'd run this brown to the battery and then this ground to the battery as well. That's the original ground. The red wire coming off is your they call it red plus, but it's the battery power. This is the positive 12 volts coming from the engine when it's running. You could run that straight to the battery and then from the battery, run it to the red wire and then also run this wire, the red wire independently to the white and red so that the white and red is your headlights, the high draw stuff. The old system had that on a separate circuit so that it would only come on when it's running, but you need this switched when you turn the key. That is powering your turn signals, and I think that's about it. So what I've done is just made a Y connector and run both leads at once. I Don't forget your tail light bulb. Change that to an 1157 automotive 12 bolt. It's been converted to an H4, which is great right now. And we're going to 12 volt. All we've got to do is buy an automotive 12 volt headlight. Uh, we're going to loosen these bolts here, both of these, lift these caps up, and replace the 6 volt bulbs underneath for the indicators. So all the connectors pull out straight down, and they're a pain to get back in. But the bulb that came out of there. This is a Stanley 6 volt, 3 watt. I wish I could tell you what the wattage of these were in 12 volts. The only information I have is 3895. And they're made in Ching Chong, Walla Walla Bing Bong. That's going to go in like that. We might actually lubricate this. So I'll put just a little silicone around there. And keep wiggling and pushing and it'll finally go. Yeah, like that. So that one's done. We got three, four to do on this side. Only one here. The neutral indicator connector that I broke earlier is just a bullet type. We ran wire up against this loom. It didn't have the wire for the neutral, no big deal. In this connector, you'll find a void, a black wire, and a blue wire. The blue wire is going to be connected to which I've unseated from the clip here. We're gonna solder these two together and that will re restore the operation of the neutral indicator. I 
I've got a battery charger hooked up now. Let's check. Oh, dude. <laughs> check all my gauge lights. Uh, they're all working. Neutral lights on. Clusters are working. Okay. Well, that about wraps this video all up. I'll end it with it running uh, without a battery. And I hope this helps someone out there. If you've got any questions, comment below. I'll do my best to answer. But on a scale of 1 to 10, this job's probably about a 3. Hardest part being getting that stator timed. And uh, maybe that information I gave you with the measurement will ease that pain. So I'd recommend it. Thanks for watching. So when you press this button, it actually shorts, well, it bypasses the ignition and sends it right to ground. Um, that wire that I mentioned earlier, the blue and white wire on the coil, that's connected to this switch. And the other end of this switch goes straight to ground. That ignition is now, the key won't turn it off. We had to add, a short button or a kill button.